And when it was early morning, all the high priest and the elders of the people formed a plan regarding Yeshua to put him to death. And after they had bound him, they brought him and they gave him over to Pilate, the governor. It's been a long day for Jesus. Starting last night, Monday evening, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane is praying, asking the Lord to take this burden from him. Once praying, he gets up and he goes and he's betrayed by one of his own disciples, a man named Judas. Judas, for 30 pieces of silver, carries, gives him over to the Roman people. The Roman Empire grabs a hold of him and takes him before the Sanhedrin, and in the Sanhedrin begin to accuse him. The high priest himself rips the garment, and we leave this story where Caiaphas, the high priest, and everyone around is wondering who's going to sacrifice the lamb. Good morning. My name's Mike Scan. I'm the senior pastor of Epic Life Church, and you've joined us on this adventure, this journey on something we're calling the story never told. We're looking at the the, the in, in, intricate details of the crucifixion and how uh, the story that we walk with a man who lived through three days of the darkest time of anybody's life. And we find him now being turned over to Pontius Pilate, the governor of Jerusalem. What does this innocent man who has nothing to do with the Jewish people have to do with Jesus? Really, absolutely nothing. See, the Jewish people, the Jewish leaders, they didn't want to be accused by all their followers that they killed the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They wanted to be a clean hand. But Pilate also, being a politician, he didn't want to be involved in it either. He didn't want someone's blood on his hands. So he sends him over to another leader in Israel, a man named Herod. Herod was wicked and, and foul and, and really was a Jew that ruled over the Jewish people. So they're like, hey, Pilate's like, hey, you haven't broken any of my laws. Go to Herod. So they take Jesus and they war, war, uh, take him over to Herod. Herod is fascinated by Christ, but doesn't want to have anything to do with it either and sends him right back to Pontius Pilate. Now, Pilate is at an impasse. He has to make a decision. Does he satisfy the Jewish people or does he listen to his conscience? His wife having a dream the night before, telling Pilate, have nothing to do with this man, let him go. But political uprise, man, has a different, a different texture. It has more power and a draw to you than you can know. And Pilate wanted to satisfy everybody, but he knew he couldn't. So what does he do? He makes the hard decision to say, hey, what we'll do, this should satisfy them. We will have him scourged. We'll have him beat. He takes him, turns him over to the Romans, and the Romans take him to the courtyard to have the punishment carried out. They say that in Roman times, that actually when a sentence like this was passed, it was for 40 lashes with a cat of nine tails. But they would never take the last one. They'd only go to 38 or 39 because it would kill a man to take all 40. It was the most gruesome form of punishment, yet when a person was done, it was they wish they would have died. They would tie his hand so he couldn't turn. And when his back was worn out and was so bloody that you could not even uh, identify it was skin, they took him and they flipped him over. And they began to whip him again. 25, 26, 27. With every swing of the cat of nine tails, flesh is being pulled, bone is being exposed, blood is being spilled. The Bible says it this way in the book of Isaiah. It says that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was on him. Jesus took a beating that no other man could possibly withstand. Matter of fact, when he's finished with the punishment, a Roman soldier standing back, observing what's happening, looks at Jesus, unidentifiable now as a human being, and says these powerful words, surely this is the man. They usher him back up, put a crown of thorns upon his head, sticking into his cranium, and then clothe him with sackcloth, a burlap sack that cuts in and irritates the already open sores and cuts and bruises on his body. They then usher him back to Pilate. Pilate looks at Jesus, who it does not look like the same man that he just sentenced to this punishment. 
He stands him up before the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of those men and women that are chanting, they want him dead, they don't want him. And he says, behold your king. They don't, they reject him. And they say, no, this is not our king. Pilate doesn't know what to do. He's lost for words, so he washes his hands and he says, what do you want me to do with this man? And the last thing that he hears in the crowd as they roar, crucify, crucify, crucify him. <laughs> 